Hello, Royal High School Woodshop. Welcome, and today we're gonna look at project three of our second semester. We're gonna start on a three-part project. Uh, the beginning of this project begins with layout and design. So we're gonna develop an idea, a concept, so we'll see the progression of how a piece of furniture, a cabinet, any, any piece of woodworking is developed. Um, today we're going to start with the design and layout portion of that project. Hey, it's Mr. Sorensen, and today we're introducing this idea of a uh, designing a project. So we want to kind of look at how does that idea concept develop. So uh, here I am sitting on my front porch, and I had a couple of chocolate chip cookies and my coffee and in the middle of doing that my youngest daughter said hey can you make me a box can you make me a jewelry box so uh, having finished the cookies I grabbed my napkin and I had a pen in my pocket I grabbed something I could write on and I just decided well let me see what what would I maybe make a box look like and so I'm just going to sketch out my idea here. For a box. And it's nothing official. Again, right? I'm I'm just using my napkin. But I can sort of get an idea of what would I make this look like. I can take a look at like how tall would I make a little jewelry box for a two and a half to three year old girl. Um, you know, what's she gonna hold in it? So how, how long would I make it? And I can start putting these ideas down on my, my napkin here. Now how deep would the box need to be for someone that small? They're not going to have a lot of, um, a lot of things, they're not going to have a cell phone or a, a pair of glasses or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to start my idea just on my napkin. Um, now, after a couple minutes, my idea begins to take shape. And the next thing you know, I, I have an, a concept. This is where concept design often starts. It doesn't have to be anywhere official. It doesn't have to be in an office building at a desk. It can just be over a cup of coffee. And um, once I have created my idea and I feel like, yeah, that could work. Now the next step is going to be to take this idea and give it to somebody to, a, to draw it out in a more official manner to create a working drawing from this sketch so that we could actually build the project. Well, now we understand where concept design begins, right? It doesn't have to look like anything official. It can begin with a cup of coffee at a Starbucks or over a, uh, a dinner somewhere. And all I need really is a, something to write with and a napkin. So here I have the concept that I developed on the napkin, having coffee on my front porch. It's now time to take that idea and transfer it into something a little more formal that has a little bit more detail so we can start to work out all the issues that we might have. We're gonna do things like choose material. We're gonna choose woodworking joints to use. We're gonna um, maybe refine the size and the shape. All of that has to be done now as we take this concept the one on the napkin, and we start to transfer it to a working drawing through the process of drafting. Today I'm going to introduce you to the project that we are now going to work on and finish up our school year with. So we're starting today a look at drafting, drafting and design. That's how all projects that get built in the woodshop begin, in a picture somewhere. Once the design is made, then we're able to take that design and put it into an actual project. Now, what you want to find is what you see behind me on the board. In your kit, you should have 
a rolled up sheet of paper. Let's start with that. Go find that. All right, well, it should look like this. It's got a rubber band on it. When you take the rubber band off, then I'm gonna unroll it. And I've got a, an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. It's got a border around it. It's got a, a uh, name block along the bottom where I'm gonna put my name and I'm gonna put uh, what period I'm in, the date, my name, all of that good stuff is going to go on the title block that's on the bottom of the paper. <clears throat> now, to start off with, I'm going to use page one, right? So I look at it, it says page one of three. This is the starting page. And what I see here is exactly what's behind me here on the board. There's a, a large rectangle. That This is a working drawing. A working drawing has three views of the thing you're building. So we're gonna be building a box like this. This is what we're gonna design. The, the view right here is the top view. That's looking directly down and into the box. We're gonna draw what the box would look like if we were looking straight down into the top of it. Below that right here is the front view. So we're gonna take the box like that and we're gonna go like this. There's the front view. That's what the box looks like if you're standing in front of it. Now over here is our third view. So we're gonna take the box and do this. Turn it sideways. This is the side view. That's what the box would look like if you were looking at it from the side. So this is the page we're going to begin working on. I'm going to show you how to draw the top view, the front view, and the side view all on this one single sheet of paper, right? We're just looking at different views of the same box. So to start with, I want to take my drafting paper. I'm going to take the rubber band off and I'm going to unfurl that piece of paper. The piece of paper has a title block. The title block is down at the bottom. That's where you're going to put your name the date, what period you're in, right? And the title block, when I sit and write and draw on this, the title block should be facing me, right? And so I would take this, my recommendation is that you take this and tape this down. Uh, notice they're all rolled up. So it's gonna work better if it's taped down. If you try to draw with this and it keeps wanting to roll up, it's gonna be really frustrating. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna tape it down in front of me on my desk. This probably is not gonna work very good on a tile cabinet, uh, carpet, wood flooring, things like that. To be able to work with this, it's gonna have to be a perfectly smooth surface. So I'm gonna tape it down. Now, tape down in front of me, here's what I see. Today we're gonna start on the top view and I'm gonna show you that in video one. Video two is gonna move us to the front view. That's looking at the front of the box. And then video three will show us that drawing the end. So all three videos have to be done on this same page, right? The top, the front, and the side. We're only looking at the box itself. After we're done drafting out and designing the box, then we'll take a look at the lid. I'll help you draft and draw out the lid plus design the pattern that you're gonna put in your lid. So don't worry about the lid yet, that comes later. Right now we're just looking at the three views of the box. Today we're gonna to start on the top view. So what you should see on your paper, you also see here behind me on the board. So there's four points. Now typically in a drafting project, I'm gonna to have to locate those on my piece of vellum on, or on my piece of paper. But today I've given you the starting points of our drawing uh, already on your paper so you don't have to locate the actual picture on the paper. It's already located, all you need to do is pick up on the four corner points and continue forward. Now the tools that you're gonna need for your drawing process really are an eraser, a pencil, and a ruler. I'm going to use this ruler right here. It's a little bit bigger but it makes it easier for you to see on the board and you're going to want to use the ruler that came in your kit. Um, 
this is not a good application for the tape measure. Um, this, is, this is a ruler project. And so with a pencil, a ruler, and an eraser, we should be able to construct this project that we're going to be building. So the way this is going to work best is I'm going to work on it on the board. What You're going to watch and see what I'm doing. I'll kind of explain it to you. And then right away, you're going to, you could pause the video and you could draw out what you see me draw. Then hit play again and uh, start it back up and watch what I draw. And then you draw the same thing in the same way I do it on your piece of paper at home. Now, a draftsman might do this on a computer. A, a draftsman or an architect might have all sorts of drafting tools that they would use for this. And we, we talked about some of that earlier in our reading. But uh, here, what we have in this distance learning process, we have a flat surface, a piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler, and an eraser. And so we're gonna do the best we can at this process. And we do this at school in our class and it turns out very well. So um, I think you'll have great success at home. The first thing I want you to do with your drawing is I want you to just go ahead and use the four points that you see there on the screen as sort of a dot to dot. I'm simply gonna connect all the four corners and I do this very lightly. At the beginning of a drawing, I wanna operate very lightly because that's gonna allow me to erase if I make any mistakes. After I get the drawing fully on the paper and I notice that it's completely done and there are no problems, then I come back and I darken in all the lines that I wanna keep and I can erase all the lines that are unnecessary. So I'm gonna connect I'll connect the corners, but I'm going to do it very lightly. All right, so there's the outline of the box, right? There's the outline of the box. And uh, now we're going to add to it a lot of the details that are needed. The next thing I want to do now is draw the sides of the box. I have the overall shape, the overall size and shape, which is a full size, but now I want to draw the thickness of the walls. I need to draw what represents the walls or the sides of the box all the way around. So this, the box that we're building, the wall thickness, the thickness of the piece of wood is one half inch, one half inch. Now, obviously this means I have to be able to read my ruler one half inch on your ruler is eight of the really small marks. So again, if you're not exactly sure how to measure out a half inch, then you just simply start at zero, count over eight tiny marks, and that's where you should put the next line that you draw. That's a half inch. And I'm gonna go like that. I'll measure down a half inch here with my ruler and then I'm going to come over here to the right side measure down a half inch with my ruler put a line then I'm going to turn my ruler horizontally or sideways and draw a line across and now I'm going to do that all the way around the entire box I'll come over here measure over a half inch measure over a half inch Measure in a half inch, in a half inch. Turn my ruler, turn the ruler vertically and then connect that. So now what I have represented on my page is the outside of the box and the thickness of the walls, which are half inch thick, that go all the way around. So the next thing I need to do is I need to look in the corners. We're going we're gonna to work on the corners and the joinery that's going to be used to hold this box together. Now, we're not going to use the simple butt joint that we talked about last time in our uh, joinery project. We're actually going to use a rabbit joint in this case. We, we're going to have several of these woodworking joints that we talked about in our display board represented in our actual project. The box itself is going to be held together by rabbits rabbit joints. So 
Let me show you how we're going to draw that. Now, a notch or groove in a board is never more than halfway through the board. So in this case, if the wall thickness of my piece is a half inch, then half of a half is a quarter. So I'm going to measure over a quarter inch on this from this left side. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to measure in a quarter inch and put a mark. Then I'm going to turn my line, my ruler vertically like this. And now I'm only going to draw this line at the very tips. One up here at the top. Down here at the bottom. Now I need my eraser. And there we go. You can see that now this half inch end piece, right, the side of the box, has a rabbit. It has a notch cut out of the end to receive this piece of wood right here, this, the, this, the front or the back, which is going to fit into that little rabbit. All right, so we've done this on the left side. Now we need to move down to the right side and do it down here. I'm going to repeat that process. I'll measure in a, half, a quarter inch, half of a half. I'll measure in a quarter inch up here at the top. Now I measure over a quarter, measure over a quarter, turn my ruler vertically, and again remember I only need these lines that I'm drawing here at the bottom and at the top. Now I can come back. And I'm going to use my eraser. To erase. So you can see here, here's the notch, right? That's called a rabbit. This end piece, the side of the box, has a rabbit at the top and at the bottom where the front and the back fit in. And that rabbit joint, right, anytime we use joinery that has all sorts of notches and grooves in it, we are trying to increase the surface area of wood touching wood. We want to, joinery is used to increase the surface area of wood touching wood. The more wood that touches wood, we can put glue on it, and the more glue we can get into that corner, the stronger it becomes. So all of this joinery that we've talked about, it serves one main purpose, and that is to create more surfaces to put glue on. All right, so now I'm going to, the overall shape and the overall structure is drawn, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to just darken in the lines now of the half inch front, back, side, side, and how they fit together. Well, now that I have my overall shape created, I'm going to darken things in.
All right, well, there's my box structure. Back, front, right side, left side. And remember, as it shows up here on the, on the board, this is our top view. We're looking straight down at the top of the box. So here we are looking down into our box. You can see my sunglasses in there. How do the sunglasses stay in the box? All we have is four sides. Well, just like this box here, there's material in there. That means there must be a bottom in there, even though you can't see it from the front. Now we have a tool in order to let us put that into a drawing, and that's a hidden line that we talked about in our shop talk. A dash line uh, is a hidden line, and it says that there are pieces here that you cannot see from this view, but they are still in here. This is a good example of a bottom piece that you can't see. Now, let me show you how this works. And to do that, I have two pieces from our, the actual box. Right? So here is a front piece and a side piece from the actual box. And in here right, goes the bottom. Now, how is the bottom in there, right? Even though I can't see it, how does the bottom stay in there? So let's turn it around and look on the interior of the box in the woodworking joints that you can't see and see what happens. So there's a bottom, the bottom slides out and we can see, hey, that's one of the, the woodworking joints that was in our shop talk terms. That's a groove. A groove is a notch or groove that's cut into a board with the grain of the wood. It's not a rabbit because it's not along the edge. It's up in the interior of the board. That makes it a groove. It's also different than a dado. Remember, a dado goes across the grain of the wood. So this is a groove. It goes with the grain of the wood, and it would go on all four pieces all the way around. That allows me to take the bottom material, the MDF, and slide it into that notch. Once I glue all four sides on, that is locked in there, and it will never come out. Here's how the bottom fits into the box. Now let me show you how I would draw that, right? Remember, we're looking straight down on the top. What, how would I see that? How would I see that groove from the top view? It's very likely that if I look underneath, I will see a bottom. And so a bottom view needs to be drawn in there. Now there's a way that we do this. In our terms, we, we saw how this is put in our drawing. In our shop talk terms, we saw how this was put in. There is a line used in drafting called a hidden line. Parts that cannot be seen but are there are always drawn using hidden lines. The hidden line is a dashed line. So in our box, we're going to indicate that there's a bottom in it, even though we're looking at it from the top and we can't see it. Now, as I said before, if I put a notch, this is going to be a groove, right? A groove that should, that should signal to you, oh, these are notches or grooves put in the board with the grain of the wood, right? A groove is different from a dado because the groove goes with the grain. And this notch is going to go, or this groove is going to go with the grain all the way around the box and the bottom is going to fit in this little groove. We also remember from drawing this initial part that a notch or a groove never goes into the wood more than halfway through the thickness of the board. So um, our groove has to be no deeper than one quarter inch. No deeper than one quarter inch. So I'm going to start up here at the top. I'm going to take my ruler and I'll put my ruler here on the left side. I'm going to measure up or down a quarter inch. Put a mark. I'm going to come down here, measure up a quarter inch. Then I'm going to turn my ruler like that. Now I'm going to draw a line, but the line has to be dashed. It cannot be a solid line. It's got to be a dashed line.
There we go. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Measure up a quarter inch or down a quarter inch. Measure up or down a quarter inch. I'm going to turn my ruler horizontally and again I'm going to draw a line right through the front piece of the box but it has to be dashed. There we go. Now I need to do the same thing on the right side and the left side. All right, now, so there's my box got the four corners joined together and I have the indication that there's a bottom in there. It's hidden. And so I see these dashed lines that go all the way around that indicates to me, oh, there's something in there. I can't tell exactly what it is, but it sticks out into the front piece. It sticks out into the side piece by about a quarter inch. Hmm, I wonder what that is. So you can't always tell from one view, but once you put three views, the top view, the front view, and the side view together, then we'll be able to understand, oh, I know what that is. That's the bottom of the box. So we are done with our initial drawing of the top view. It's a fairly simple box that we're making. It's got four sides held together by rabbit joints at each end and a bottom piece that's going to fit in there. The next thing we want to do in a drawing is we need, obviously, some information about, well, how big is this going to be? So the next step are the dimensions. The first thing we're going to add here are some extension lines. Extension lines, as we learned in our shop talk, extend away from the object. So I'll bring my ruler up to the top. Extend a line off to the left, both at the top and the bottom. Notice that they do not touch the object itself. Extension lines don't touch the object. Now there's several things that I need to indicate here. So I want to indicate how deep is the notch on the rabbit. So I'm going to put an extension line up here and then I'm going to move over to the other side of the rabbit joint. Put an extension line up there. Now I'm going to move down to this side. I want to show how long is this back piece. So I'm not going to go to the end of the box. I'm going to come to the end of the back piece. And draw up another extension line. Now it's usual that I would put a dimension for the total length. So I'm not going to do that up here because I don't have a ton of room. I'm going to move down here and do my total overall length down here. So I'll start at the left end of the box, draw an extension line down. Now I'm going to come all the way over to the far right side of the box, and extend a, right, a line down there. Just remember, if I look here, I notice that none of the extension lines touch. So right here in this corner, I want to indicate how far in the notch goes. So I'm going to do that extending right off here on the right side. I'm going to extend the top edge of the box out. And I'm now going to drop down a half inch only, a half inch only, just to the end of that little notch, and I'm going to come in here and draw a line out. Now my line does cross over the outside of the box here, but it doesn't touch the corner here of the rabbit, which is what it's pointing to. So again, there's a little bit of a space between what it's supposed to indicate and 
the actual extension line. So now what I want to start doing is adding in my dimensions. So there's two things that I'm going to put here. Number one, I'm going to put a dimension line. Dimension lines are known because they have arrows. And then I'm going to add in the written text or the written numbers. So let me go ahead and add my dimension lines, which are the arrows in here. Now here's an important element for those of you that would like to earn an A on this project. You cannot get an A on your project unless your dimension lines touch the extension lines like you see here. The dimension line has to touch the extension line like you see here. The dimension line goes from the extension, the dimension, the, let's say it's four inches. Four inches goes from the extension line to the extension line. You cannot stop the arrow early. The, the dimension goes from the tip of the arrow to the tip of the arrow. So if you stop it early, if you stop it in some random arbitrary spot, it's going to bring confusion into the size of your drawing. Now for the little rabbit joint here, I'll put two arrows. I can't fit my arrow in this tiny space, so I'm going to put an arrow here and a bigger arrow here, like that. And then I'll come down this way. Now notice all my arrows touch the extension lines. My dimension lines touch my extension lines. If you want an A on the project, you got to do that. If I just put an arrow like that and it just kind of stops out in the middle of nowhere, my grade is going to drop. That, that, that project is worth no better than a C, right? No better than a C if you leave off these really critical details. So this is a big no, right? You want your arrow, your dimension line to stop right at the extension line. Now, I'll do the same down here. I'm going to put two arrows. Now, in your drawing, because you're doing it on a much smaller scale than what I'm doing, you may be able to fit your arrow and your dimension inside. But And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom. All right, and notice at the, in the center of each of the spaces, I'm leaving a blank where I'm going to actually draw in my number. Well, now let's go ahead and add our dimensions to the top view of our drawing and then we'll be done with that and we can move on to the front view. I'm going to start right here at the top. This is going to tell us the length of this back piece and this front piece. That dimension is seven and one quarter of an inch. So I want to write it like that. I want to make sure I put my inches symbol in there as well. Down here, I'm going to put a dimension here. Now at home on your paper, if you can write in between those two extension lines, you're welcome to put the dimension there. In this case, I can't do that. There's not a space for me to write. So I'm just going to come out here to the end of this little arrow, put a leg, and I'm going to write one quarter inch. That's telling me that the notch for the rabbit joint is a quarter inch deep. We never want a rabbit or a groove or a dado to be deeper than one half of the thickness of the material. So the wall of our box is a half inch thick. That means our rabbit, the notch for our rabbit can only be one quarter inch. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to go ahead and mark that this notch down here is quarter inch as well. 
So I'm going to put it on the outside. If you can fit it in between the two extension lines, you're welcome to just write it in here. Over on this side, this is going to tell us how wide the box is. I'm going to write in four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. That's how wide the box is. Uh, down here, I'm going to tell us how deep is the rabbit, right? So the rabbit is, uh, it goes in, the, the rabbit notch goes in a quarter inch this way, and it's a half inch wide this way. So I want to tell, not only am I showing how wide is the, the rabbit, but I'm showing how wide this back piece of material is. That's a half inch. So I'm going to come over here. Again, I can't fit it between the two extension lines, so I'll come down here. Here's my arrow. I'm going to draw a little leg on the arrow and write in one half inch. I'll go ahead and put my arrow tips there as well. I'm, I'm going to just very specifically put some arrows right here. Like that. The reason I'm going to do that is I want to just spell out that the thickness of the material is a half inch, right? This tells us that, but it can get lost up in here and someone might associate that half inch with the rabbit and forget that that actually also tells me how thick the material is. So I'm going to put my lines and put a half inch there. So now we know the material is a half inch thick. Another piece that we're going to draw in here is we need to communicate how deep the groove that runs through each of the pieces is that the bottom is going to fit into. Now, we know it's a groove. That's one of the woodworking joints that we learned about in our previous project. We know it's a groove because of the definition, right? A dado goes across the grain, a groove goes with the grain. And this little groove is going to run all the way around the inside of our box so that the bottom can be trapped in there. The bot that's what's going to keep the bottom in the box. So we want to indicate how deep do we make this groove on all four pieces. To do that, I'm going to put my ruler here and I'm going to bring my arrow up to the I'm going to bring my arrow like that up to the inside of the box right here. And then I'm going to bring the other half of the arrow. So it has to be straight across from it. I'm going to bring the other half of the arrow out from the dashed line. And then I'm going to put my little leg down like that. And I'm going to write in there, right? Again, the groove is a quarter inch. It's, it can never be deeper than halfway through whatever the thickness of the wall is. So in this case, the, the side piece is a half inch thick. Half of that is a quarter. So I'm going to put one quarter inch out here, and that tells us how deep the groove is that runs around the inside of the box that we're going to put the bottom piece in. Down here at the bottom, I need to put a dimension. Now, this, this dimension down here is really just a matter of mathematics. If the back piece is seven and a quarter, and there's a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. If I add those up, that should give me the dimension that goes here. So seven and a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter, that's seven and a quarter, seven and a half, seven and three quarter. Seven and three quarter inches. Now the last thing I need to do is remember that we gotta we gotta indicate that we have bottom material in here, right? That's the dash line. It's not seen very well. It's not clear from the top looking down into the box. Right, but when I look down into the box, there's material down in here. So I have to indicate that. And the best way to do that is just with a note. So here we've put a lot of dimensions, numbers on the page, but now we need to put a note, written text. One thing about written text, we always want to use capital block letters, right? So that it's very clear to read. So for an A in a drafting project, you have to make sure all your writing is done with capital block letters. So I'm going to come in here and right down here in this open space, I'll put in uh, the information about the bottom. So 
I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to put an arrow. Go like that. And then I'm going to write in that this is one eighth inch or one quarter inch. I think this is one quarter inch uh, MDF. Okay. One quarter inch. MDF. MDF stands for medium density fiberboard. And then I'll just spell out the word bottom so that now the person looking at the drawings knows, oh, there's a one, eight, one quarter inch MDF bottom piece that sits down inside this box. I think that covers it for us. We now have all the dimensions necessary to begin kind of putting together and piecing together the box itself. Now what we need to do is turn to the front view and draw that and the side view and draw that. That'll be in videos two and three. And we will then have a working drawing and enough information that we could physically go into the workshop and build the actual box. All right, we'll see you next time in video number two as we look at the front view of the box. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time